92nd Street Y Online Media is made possible by the generous support of the Sidney E. Frank Foundation and by listeners like you. This program features Leonard Cohen reading from his work. It was recorded February 14, 1966, before a live audience at New York's 92nd Street Y. I once believed a single line in a Chinese poem could change forever how blossoms fell and that the moon itself climbed on the grief of concise weeping men to journey over cups of wine. I thought invasions were begun for crows to pick at a skeleton, dynasties sown and spent to serve the language of a fine lament. I thought governors ended their lives as sweetly drunken monks, telling time by rain and candles, instructed by an insect's pilgrimage across the page. All this so, so one might send an exile's perfect letter to an ancient home on the country, broke from, broke, broke from love, scorned the fraternity of war. I polished my tongue against the pumice moon, floated my soul in cherry wine, a perfume barge for lords of memory to languish on, to drink, to whisper out their store of strength, as if beyond the mist along the shore, their girls, their power still obeyed, like clocks wound for a thousand years. I waited until my tongue was sore. Brown petals wine like fire around my poems. I aimed them at the stars, but like rainbows they were bent before they sawed the world in half. Who can trace the canyon paths cattle have carved out of time, wandering from meadowlands to feasts? Layer after layer of autumn leaves are swept away. Something forgets us perfectly. You have the lovers. They are nameless. Their history is only for each other. And you have the room, the bed, and the windows. Pretend it is a ritual. Unfurl the bed, bury the lovers, blacken the windows. Let them live in that house for a generation or two. No one dares disturb them. Visitors in the corridor tiptoe past the long closed door. They listen for sounds, for a moan, for a song. Nothing is heard, not even breathing. You know they are not dead. You can feel the presence of their intense love. Your children grow up, they leave you. They have become soldiers and riders. Your mate dies after a life of service. Who knows you? Who remembers you? But in your house, a ritual is in progress. It is not finished. It needs more people. One day, the door is opened to the lover's chamber. The room has become a dense garden full of colors, smells, sounds you have never known. The bed is smooth as a wafer of sunlight. In the midst of the garden, it stands alone. In the bed, the lovers, slowly and deliberately and silently, perform the act of love. Their eyes are closed as tightly as if heavy coins of flesh lay on them. Their lips are bruised with new and old bruises. Her hair and his beard are hopelessly tangled. When he puts his mouth against her shoulder, she is uncertain whether her shoulder has given or received the kiss. All her flesh is like a mouth. He carries his fingers along her waist and feels his own waist caressed. She holds him closer, and his own arms tighten around her. She kisses the hand beside her mouth. It is his hand or her hand. It hardly matters. There are so many more kisses. You stand beside the bed, weeping with happiness. You carefully peel away the sheets from the slow-moving bodies. Your eyes are filled with tears. You barely make out the lovers. As you undress, you sing out, and your voice is magnificent because now you believe it is the first human voice heard in that room. The garments you let fall grow into vines. You climb into bed and recover the flesh. 
You close your eyes and allow them to be sewn shut. You create an embrace and fall into it. There is only one moment of pain or doubt as you wonder how many multitudes are lying beside your body, but a mouth kisses and a hand soothes the moment away. One last song. It's true that all the men you knew were dealers who said they were through with dealing every time you gave them shelter. I know that kind of man. It's hard to hold the hand of anyone who's reaching for the sky just to surrender. And leaning on the windowsill, he'll say that you have caused his will to weaken with your love and warmth and shelter. And taking from his wallet an old schedule of trains, he'll say, I told you when I came, I was a stranger. I told you when I came, I was a stranger. And sweeping up the jokers that he left behind, you find he didn't leave you very much, not even laughter. Like any dealer, he was watching for the car that is so high and wild, he'll never need to deal another. He was just some Joseph looking for a man. But now another stranger seems to want you to ignore his dreams as though they were the burden of another. You've seen that man before, his golden arm dispatching cards, but now it's rusted from the elbow to the finger. And he wants to trade the game he knows for sure. But you cannot watch another tired man lay down his hand like he was giving up the holy game of poker. And while he talks his dreams to sleep, you notice there's a highway that is curling up like smoke above his shoulder. You flick it off, it holds you like a mirror. You tell him to come in, sit down, but something makes you turn around. The door is open, you can't close your shelter. You try the handle of the road, it opens. Do not be afraid, it's you, my love. It's you who are the stranger. It's you, my love. It's you who are the stranger. I've been waiting, I was sure we'd time to board another. Please understand I never had a secret charm to get me to the heart of this or any other matter. Yes, he talks like this. You don't know what to answer. Let's meet tomorrow if you choose upon the shore beneath the bridge that they are building on some endless river. Then he leaves the platform for the sleeping car that's warm. You realize he's only advertising one more shelter. And it comes to you, he never was a stranger. And you say, okay, the bridge or someplace later. Then sweeping up the jokers that he left behind, you find he didn't not even laughter. Like any dealer, he was watching for the car that is so high and wild, he'll never need to deal another. He was just some Joseph looking for a manger. And leaning on the windowsill,
sail, he'll say that you have caused his will to weaken with your love and warmth and shelter. And taking from his wallet an old schedule of trains, he'll say, I told you when I came I was a stranger. I told you when I came I was a stranger. Thanks for listening. 92nd Street Y Unterberg Poetry Center webcasts and access to our archive are made possible by the generous support of the Sidney E. Frank Foundation. For more information on the 92nd Street Y and all of our programs, please visit us on the web at 92y.org. This program is copyright 1966 by the 92nd Street Y.